Hey everyone, in today's video we're going to make a photographic copy stand and since I'm going to be using this thing today I figured I would go ahead and build it really quickly and do the video at the same time. So first things, what we're going to do is basically make a copy stand so that this is the subject that we want to copy, let's say. The camera will point straight down with the lens parallel with the plane so that, cop so that, images, so that whatever I'm photographing can be set at rest and a macro lens or other type of apparatus can be used to take detailed photographs that'll allow the camera to stay steady if I want to do very detailed <clears throat> f16 f22 photographs with a macro lens I won't have to hand hold it and get lots of camera shake this will also be more stable than a tripod so one part that I needed that I got off eBay is not included in this receipt is an enlarger arm and I'll show that to you in a minute. But here's the rest of the parts list. You're gonna need a wood base, which I got a 17, and th uh, 17 inch, uh, three quarter thick uh, plywood round. That was $12. Uh, we're gonna need an arm to raise and lower the camera, just like an enlarger arm. For that, I used one and a, one and a half inch 30, uh, diameter, 36 inch round poplar. That was a $5 piece um, dowel rod. I needed a closet flange, which is a plumbing part, a pipe increaser hub, which is another plumbing part. The closet flange, which is this right here, was $11.19, and the increaser was $6. And so this is a four to three closet flange. This is a three to one and a half and larger. I needed six screws that I'm gonna put into the closet flange to anchor it to the wood around, those I had lying around. A uh, fixed spring snap, which is this plastic component on the bottom of the of the poplar round, and uh, also needed an let's see a, a set of 100 washers, and that was that and the spring snap were both three dollars two seventy nine. Uh, I didn't know how many washers I was going to need, so I just got a hundred of them, and they were one quarter inch washers. Uh, I could have gotten away with twenty. Uh, I also used a couple of quarter 20 nuts that I had. Uh, I bought some coupling nuts, did not need those. Uh, I got a quarter 20 eye bolt. Uh, I forget how long it was. I want to say it was four inches and um, a trap adapter. I think they charged me for something twice. Gosh darn it. Anyway, so here's how we're going to build this thing. <clears throat> the first step in the build is going to be to take this big piece of plywood. And as you can maybe see, it's just a big plywood round. And I pre-drilled six holes <clears throat> as, as far as I could on the end of the ply, plywood and what I'll do is I'm going to mount I forget how I'm going to mount this here it goes this is how it goes um, I'm going to mount the uh, first the, the three to four closet trap right here the three to one and a half reducer will go on top of it and then the one and a half inch poplar will go inside of it. And this coupling piece right here provides enough friction that the uh, poplar shaft won't move. And in addition, when this seats upright, ah, come on, the poplar will also be flush on the wood, giving it a lot of stability. To adjust the camera, I got an arm off of an old and larger, and this was what drove the entire design with the poplar and, and everything else. If you have a different way of doing it, that's, that's fine. There might be other options. Um, and what this does is I loosen it. There we go. And once it's loosened, in theory, more than actuality, come on. Okay, so what had happened was 
my enlarger, the knob had come off of the the screw, the tightener. So at any rate, so I'm going to leave it off for right now until I have a chance to glue that. That's part of the joy of working with old components is that sometimes they're a little bit beat up. So at any rate, the way this is going to work is that the enlarger arm will slide up and down on the poplar and then I'll tighten it in place at the position I want. Here is the quarter 20 eye bolt. That's the same threading as your camera's tripod bushing. If I take it out, I'll show you how I built this. To make it the same width as the enlarger opening for the rod that had been there, the rod that was there was for the enlarger head, which I could not adapt to hold a camera. So instead, I got a whole bunch of washers, ran them through the center, tightened them in place with a nut on each end, and then used the eye bolt. And the eye bolt gives me a little something to grab onto here. When I tighten it, I make it so that the nut is flush with the end of the enlarger arm. Oops, wrong way. Wait, is it? I don't know. It's backwards. I can't tell. There we go. That's correct. Okay. So I get it nice and tight. And I reach behind the camera, very careful not to bump it. I do that a lot, bump the camera. And once I get the camera in position, then I just turn the eye bolt. And once the camera's tight, pull it all the way back, tighten the knob, and now the camera will be in position and I can slide the camera up and down tighten the armor I want it and that's what allows me to get my magnification and I can set the, the magnification on the macro lens to a certain amount of magnification and then if I'm using a DSLR use the focusing screen on the back to get to where I want the focus to be lock it in place and go from there and so it's, it'll make macro photography and repro graphics a whole lot easier and faster because once I have one set of settings I don't have to change them. And the nice thing is that if I want to take this apart to store it, this plastic bushing comes out of here fairly easily by lifting up on it hard enough. So I can store it in two parts so it won't take up very much closet space. This whole thing cost about 50 bucks. To get one of these uh, made to order or to get a system one is going to be substantially more expensive. To get a fancy one like a, a Reprenar, the shipping is going to cost you 50 bucks on something like that. So anyway, this is a pretty good option. As long as I have lights shining down from outside, I'll get ample illumination. Uh, I'm considering painting the top of this white to give me a nice flat base. Uh, if not, doesn't, it doesn't hurt anything. I can just put some, some white plastic or something over it. Lots of options. So anyway, this was my quick and dirty build. Uh, after this, the next thing you're gonna see after I stop talking is gonna be a uh, are going to be a few photos of this completely assembled so you can see how the whole thing looks and how it works. If this video was helpful, please give me a thumbs up. That lets me know I'm on the right track. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section. I'm pretty good about responding fairly quickly. If you have any ideas for other DIY photography builds, please let me know. And uh, if I have the ability, I'd be more than happy to make them and show you some tricks about how I did it as well as I'm more than happy to share the costs. Now bear in mind that all of the costs I just told you are for late 2013 in California. So if you're watching this at some point in the future, the prices may not have any resemblance to your actual economic uh, conditions. And also if you're in a different part of the country that's not stupidly expensive for everything, your parts might actually be a little bit cheaper. Uh, so here are some photos of the completed copy stand.